get started, we'll take a look at the data used throughout today's demo. This is a CSV file, which I will be uploading to my Splunk instance. The first row in the file contains field names, and the rest, values. Ingested into Splunk, this is what the CSV of employee records looks like. Coreplef maps utilize KML or KMZ files, also known as Keyhole Markup Language, which use latitude and longitude coordinates to map out regions. Let's take a look at the KML file I'll be using to create our Coreplef map. Here, we see a correlating field of state, and note the coordinates which define each state's regions. Let's take a closer look at what the Coreplef visualization is all about. Notice that the count for each state is set to zero, causing all states to display the same highlighted color. Now, let's dive deeper into the employee CSV data to create our query. Note that all states now have a count. We will use this data to populate our Coropleth map. In order to do so, we will have to use the geome command to correlate the KML file's feature ID field, which included states, to the field name of state found within the employee CSV data. As you can see, each state has a count of the number of employees residing within. While Splunk's default formatting can be great for some datasets, let's create custom values to use in our key and sort by on the map. Using case statements, we are able to pass multiple argument and value pairs. Finally, let's take care of that null value and set it to something more user-friendly. As you can see, we now have a fully populated map visualizing the states in which employees reside. Thank you so much for joining me in yet another Splunk tutorial.